just getting going with the tailgate show as we walk you up to the kickoff for Vanderbilt at Colorado State. For an opponent's view, let's visit with Kevin Ingram, sideline reporter for the Vanderbilt Sports Network. Kevin's been connected to Vandy Athletics for two decades. Commodore's traveling in with an uncommon taste that lasts from last week, and the Rams can kind of relate, right? <laughs> so, Kevin, both teams suffered losses in week one, the dramatic notes being each loss delivered by FCS programs. You're a sideline reporter, so your point of view. How do you describe what happened with the Vandy loss to East Tennessee State? Uh, Marty, I appreciate you having me on the show, uh, first of all. And, yeah, it's uh, it, it was a tough night. Uh, Vanderbilt got a 3 nothing lead in the first half and then uh, just never could really come up with the big plays needed to, to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, there are a lot of mistakes on both sides of the football to go around. Credit to East Tennessee State. They played well. They ran the ball. And once they got the lead, they were able to, to really be effective running the football. But, uh, yeah, for Vanderbilt, the offense just didn't click like they had hoped that it would. And uh, maybe we'll see some things cleaned up and improved this week. I thought the penalties were one thing that were, they were a big problem. A touchdown was taken off the board, and that was, to me, a key play in the game uh, for an illegal man downfield. Uh, would have would have been a, a maybe a game changing play for Vanderbilt in the second half, but yeah, just a, a lot of things on both sides of the football to clean up. Uh, hopefully, the quarterback play will uh, improve this week. But uh, I thought the defense actually had some nice moments. They they did some good things to help uh, keep Vanderbilt in the game. But uh, overall, just uh, a, a lot from a lot of different areas that need to go better for Vanderbilt to uh, win football games and have a good season. It, it was a tough start. It was a big disappointment. There's no question about it. Um, everybody went into Clark Lee's first game as head coach thinking, okay, play an FCS team, get a win here, kind of get the season off to a good start. I know you guys uh, know, like you were saying, you feel kind of the same way mm -hmm. with, with what happened against uh, South Dakota State. But, yeah, it was uh, definitely a, a disappointing opener for Vanderbilt. So we'll see how the uh, team does going on the road for the first time this year. Now, you mentioned the quarterback play. Uh, Ken Seals, Mike Wright, a couple of sophomores. Your perspective as a sideline reporter, you know, what's the difference between those two guys? Uh, very different styles. Uh, Ken Seals is more your traditional drop back passer. You know, that, that's that's his game. He threw for 1,900 yards last year as a freshman. Uh, was 20 for 34, just short of 200 yards. Threw an interception, but no touchdowns. Would have had one for the but for the penalty. Uh, Mike Wright is is certainly a different quarterback from Ken Seals. Mike is lightning fast. I mean, he has great speed. He has, just has those wheels. He can run. He can throw the ball. I mean, I think both of them can probably do the other thing better than maybe they're given credit for. Seals can probably run a little better, and Mike can pass better than uh, maybe people think, but just different styles of quarterback. I, I get the feeling you will, again, see both of them. Mike Wright was in for a few series uh, against ETSU last weekend, and uh, by all indications from Clark Lee, that's what we'll see again this week. We're talking to Kevin Ingram from the Vanderbilt Sports Network. So most definitive improvements that must be made for Vanderbilt to have success? What would they be from your perspective? Um, I just think um, one thing, improvement on the offensive line play, more rhythm from the offense. Throws have to be on time. Vanderbilt has a talented group of receivers. Now, they're going to be missing one. Ben Bresnahan, the, uh, the top tight end, is going to be out for this game, but the receiver group is really good. Will Shepard had a nice game. It was his first career start. He was big uh, back in the spring, he had a, a great spring game and kind of carried that over. He was the top target in the opener. But Cam Johnson, the experienced kind of slot guy, uh, Chris Pierce, really strong receiver. And Devin Body got his first playing time. So that group, to me, has a chance to be a real strength for this team. But you got to get them the football. you got to get them the football in right spots where they can catch it and do something with it. Uh, if you're going to you know, try to hit somebody on the sideline, you can't you know put it where they, they can't come down with the football in bounds. So uh, I think accuracy, timing, all those things with this offense to be big key. On the other side of the football, Vanderbilt has to stop not only the, the uh, rushing game of Colorado State, but the passing attack, which we saw in the opener. And I know you, when you get behind, you have to pass more. Uh, maybe then you wanted to, but uh, I, I, there's pretty impressive things that I saw out of Colorado State offensively in that opener the other night. Yeah, and I always like to ask visiting teams when they're coming in. So you notice the passing game. Are there any players that catch your attention as you're doing your midweek prep? Well, it's, it's hard to overlook Trey McBride. I mean, <laughs> I think everybody knows about him. He's considered one of the top tight end prospects in the country. He was an All-American last year. Uh, 13 catches for 116 last week. Uh, Dante Wright, 6 for 103. And uh, you know, the, the quarterback, uh, Centeno, had a nice game. So, yeah, there, there are definitely some uh, guys that, that you pay attention to when you're watching. I, I sat down. Actually, I was I was at home last Friday night, so I sat and watched quite a bit of the game and uh, you just got to get a little preview of uh, 
our next opponent. But yeah, though there are definitely some some offensive weapons that stand out. David Bailey had a nice game, I know, but uh, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a big challenge for this group. And the one thing about Colorado State is uh, you can flip that field position uh, really quickly with Ryan Stonehouse. He's one of the best punters in the country. So you know, I know people maybe overlook those special teamers sometimes, but those guys can make uh, all the difference in a football game. I think that's outstanding that the sideline reporter from Vanderbilt is giving Stoney a little mention on here. That's <laughs> Ryan's going to love that. <laughs> He's a great character, too. Now, uh, you know, something that you have to battle one of your challenges, it, and I'm saying this uh, laughing, it, you're coming from Nashville. You've got to battle the altitude. What do you think the elements are going to be? What's your attitude taking on the altitude, <laughs> Kevin? Oh, I've got attitude about the altitude. What is it? It's 5,000 feet, right? Yeah, no, about 5,000. Yeah, it's like 5,050 if you stand at the, the center of the field. Okay, okay. So not quite 5,280 like the uh, the purple line at, at Coors Field is, but right. it's close enough. It's close enough to being a mile high. Now, my experience, I've been to been to Denver a few times. I've been to, uh, been to Colorado Springs, done a basketball game at, at Air Force before. I've uh, seen baseball at Coors Field and all that, but the one thing I remember from being out there, if you're just doing normal stuff, you don't really notice the altitude that much. But if you if you try to do some exercise, and, and this has probably been 10 years ago, I was in a little better shape than I am now. And I, I went for a run. And after about 20 minutes, my lungs were on fire. I was like, man, this is uh, this is really different. You, you definitely notice when you're, you're doing physical activity. So um, I, I got to think that, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe with football, the way it's kind of a start, start and stop sort of game that maybe you don't notice it as much as if maybe you're playing basketball. But, um, yeah, it, to me, that, that was way more noticeable than I thought it would be. Uh, another funny story, my, my grandparents lived in Denver uh, back years ago in the, in the 50s. Uh, my grandfather was in the Air Force out there. And um, so my, my grandmother goes to, to cook a pot of beans. And, and I guess, you know, with the altitude, you have to cook things differently. And, and she cook, she's trying to cook these beans, and, and they just wouldn't cook. She's like, what's the deal here? You know, my, my family's from Kentucky originally, so, I mean, they're used to, you know, this is the kind of food that, that they're used to preparing, and it just didn't work. And I always thought that was a hilarious story about just the difference, and you don't think about those things, uh, just something as simple as, as trying to cook a meal. Yeah, and we're talking about the rise in elevation, making your trip from Nashville to Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, credit your media relations staff. Communications team's already got that note out there. Last time Vandy was in Colorado playing a football game, 1979, down in Colorado Springs at Air Force. So a, a final comment from you. Considering what just happened to both these programs, what they endured and the challenges ahead of them, What's their motivation from your perspective? Um, I think the motivation is just come out and however it has to happen, just get a win. Um, it, it was, you know, I, I think there was a little bit of uh, confidence rebuilding to do. Uh, certainly, and I'd say probably true for both teams after the uh, season openers last weekend. But I, I think you just pull out all stops and, and however it has to happen. If it's ugly, it's ugly, whatever it is. Maybe it's, you know, not aesthetically pleasing as you want it to be, but you just got to figure out a way to win a football game. And, and not worry about what anybody's saying about last week or, or how this looks, you know, and, and what it might have meant for your season if you, you started off 2-0 and instead of 1-1 one and one or 0-2. Or oh you just, you just got to figure out a way to get the job done this week. And I, I think both these teams are probably going to come out uh, – in a bad mood, I would say uh, that's probably been the case for both of them this week. You'll probably see that on Saturday. And, uh, you know, you don't want to say desperation early in a season and certainly early in the uh, tenure of Clark Lee as head coach. But hey, this is one where you want to turn things around and show that you're making progress in game two. You mentioned or at least hint that both squads are going to be salty. That could be good for us uh, for our entertainment value, right? Because we not only sure. we like to do this job, but we enjoy watching college football. So this could be a good thing for us. <laughs> Bandy yeah. against Colorado State on an ag day in Fort Collins on a college football Saturday. Looking forward to hanging out with you down on the field, Kevin. Sounds good, Marty. Thanks for having me. This is the Colorado State Sports Network from Learfield.